Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. And uh, I'm Tony Pellegrino and this is part of a live tech talk that I do every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific here on Facebook. So uh, thanks for joining us. Um, if you don't have your notifications turned on, please turn them on so that uh, the moment we go live, it would come up on your phone for you or your computer and uh, then you'll never miss another tech talk. So um, we also, after this show, it probably ends up like a day later, we end up posting this over on YouTube. So um, you get another chance to watch it or many chances, as many as you want, quite frankly, and all of our other uh, tech talks that we've done, you can go back and watch them. Um, if you're newer to tech talk, we also did a, I think it was a seven part series on terminology and uh, that's a great one to catch and really go through and uh, help you understand everything about the Jeep. And uh, that way nobody, when you're talking to them, is talking over your head. You'll know exactly what it is they're talking about. Um, we are here to talk about your favorite subject and mine, Jeeps. And uh, we've actually got um, Alex and Crystal. Maybe Crystal can pop up over here and show her face on camera just real quick. There she is. Hi, Say hi. Guys. Yep, she's reading the questions today, so be nice to her, okay? Yeah, sorry if I butcher your names. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, as always, uh, we welcome your questions and comments. All you have to do is uh, type in a comment, she'll read it back to me, and uh, then I'll try and answer that for you. Please include as much information about your Jeep as possible because that will help me um, help better understand what you're trying to do. All right, um, just like I talked about the last couple times, um, warehouse is packed. So if you've been wanting to order something, now's a great time and uh, you'll be able to get it quickly. So if you're trying to uh, fix up your Jeep for Memorial Day weekend, um, if you get your order in right away, we can get it shipped out to you uh, very quickly. So um, I just wanna make sure everybody knows, tell all your friends, we've got good inventory. I know there's a lot of people in the industry that are, are sucking major and can't get anything out the door. But here at Gem, right, we've got it all. And uh, my understanding is that we got a good shipment of King Shocks back in stock. So if you're looking for shocks, call in, talk to my guys. All right, I'm super excited about this. Um, I just got to put um, a brand new rugged radio setup in my Jeep JL. So this, by the way, this is the same for a JT or JL. And uh, this is the new M1. Um, I used all their mounting brackets, their wire harness, everything. And um, I'm super happy with how this installed. This also is their new mic setup, which is uh, using that favorite Skosh magnetic mount that I like. So it's, that's really cool. Um, I'm just uh, really happy about this install. I've been using a handheld and I really wanted a base radio unit. So um, I highly recommend, everybody knows Rugged is the go-to for this stuff, but um, I just didn't have a chance to get one in my JL yet, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. I've got a couple pictures to show you. So I used um, this trick little billet clamp that they have on our tire carrier to mount my antenna. So that was really trick, super easy to install, nice stainless steel screws, and uh, Rugged's updated their antennas. I don't know if you guys had noticed that, but the mast used to go right into the body here, and now they've got an extra spring on there that keeps the mast from fatiguing. So um, pretty nice and uh, real happy about that. The one thing um, that I was gonna tell you guys is the, the full install video of this, will, we will be posting over on YouTube on Friday. So you can actually see the step-by-step -step that we did on this. Um, here's a side view, you know, so if you're stepping in as the passenger, this is what it looks like. And uh, believe it or not, there's plenty of room for your legs. And um, we, we took a couple of pictures and when we did the video, we showed this. Um, it's, it's actually really nice. And um, everything tucked under the carpet real nice. I mean, I just, I was super happy with how clean this was. Everything's easy to see and get to. So, um, you know, if you guys are thinking about a base unit, I've, I've seen people tuck them inside the center console and do some other funky stuff with them. I'm not a fan of that. Um, this is a great way to do it. 
and uh, it's got good airflow. There's even an extra little fan on the back of this. So, um, you know, Rug is really doing a nice job on this, and I would highly recommend this. By, by the way, I only had to put, take out one screw, existing screw, on the center console to mount this whole thing. So I was pretty stoked about that. All right. Um, do we have any questions on that? Uh, do you guys have front aluminum high lines in stock for TJs? We do. Yeah. We, yeah. In uh, no flare or what we call zero or bolder, uh, four inch and six inch. So um, just call in and get your order in. You can order them online too. But uh, yeah, everything's in stock. So immediate delivery. All right, more questions or are we? Uh, Sam Walker said cool antenna mount. It is a cool antenna mount. How did you run the wire outside the body if you're running the hard top for the antenna, said Jeremy. Yeah, so um, up here, I, the, the picture isn't quite high enough, but it's okay, I mean, I can talk about it. Um, there's a rubber mount that where the, the uh, hard top and the glass meet with the body. And um, I was able to fish the wire right through there um, so that it's not getting pinched. It's really well protected. You do not want to pinch this coaxial cable. If you do, it'll short out and uh, it'll ruin your ability to transmit or receive. So um, you, you definitely want to be cognizant of that. And I talk about that in the video. So um, yeah, this is a great alternative. I'm, I'm super happy with this. And by the way, I figured out that if I take my tire carrier off, this uh, mount will fit right inside this bolt hole right here. So um, I've got a great solution whether the tire carrier is on or off. So uh, with the core being run the way it is. So super happy about that. More questions on the radio? Dave Law said, what's the DB on the antenna? Um, actually, I don't know. That's a good question. It came with a little thing about tuning the antenna. Uh, it's right there next to the wheel. Uh, yeah, it sure is. Let's see if it says on here. Two point four is the DB. Yeah. So um, pretty nice, and they give you a bunch of instructions on where to mount it and everything. So um, you know, obviously this being behind the ideal is up on the roof and um you know being behind i'm gonna i'll be able to transmit backwards okay but forwards isn't as great but honestly you know i've been talking on a handheld inside the jeep so that's that's absolutely terrible so this is going to be way better than what i've been doing more questions um uh anthony said what about the jku do you have the same for it so the, the JKU has a similar bracket. You can actually see all of the bracketry um, over on Rugged's website. It's a really good website. Um, and, you know, I chose like a base radio kit um, that's, that's vehicle specific, right? So it comes with the wire harness and the whole thing. Um, you can do like crazy stuff, including intercoms and everything like I have in Terramoto right behind us. So um, all of that is available as well. That's where you're wearing headsets and doing that whole thing. For in the, in the JL, I wanted more of a, a basic setup in here. Um, the speaker on this is plenty loud for us to hear in a quiet vehicle like the JL, where um, you know if I was uh, in the Terramoto, you've got to have something better or a race car. Yep. Uh, Jennings would like to know, do you sell radio antennas? Mine broke a while ago. Yes, we do. Um, we typically have some extras around here, and uh, I know, you know, obviously Rugged's got them as well. So, yeah, we've got them sitting right here in the studio. So, um, yeah, good question. They, they, by the way, they fall off, break off. It's pretty common, so um, they're readily available. Yeah. What else we got? Kevin Miller, will it fit in the TJLJ Generate Center console for a clean looking mount? Yeah, in fact, um, that's, that's how I prefer it, right? So like in Terramoto, I guess it would have been a good idea to load one of those pictures up, but in the Terramoto, um, it's, it's mounted in the center console in uh, Jamie's and Jeff's. They've all got it. And by the way, you can see pictures of that over on our website. Um, we've got a great gallery um, of all the Jeep builds over there. 
and you can see how that's buried. And then um, we've also mounted the uh, intercom in the dash as well, so it's super clean. And uh, you know, the, you can get, um, Rugged has all the pre-programmed channels, and um, that's really nice. It, it makes it easy if you're not familiar with ham style radios. It makes it really easy to use. And uh, this is what everybody switched over to from CBs. CBs just don't cut the mustard anymore. And these things are fantastic. So I've, by the way, in Terramoto, I've been like 25 miles away and been able to talk to camp. So, yep. What else? Uh, Troy Merritt, would the radio get hot inside a Tuffy Center console? Would the auxiliary fan work? Um, yeah, and, and you know, like um, I noticed that the owner of Rugged had his radio in his center console. He he likes that like super factory look. Um, it, it's totally possible. I mean, you know, Tuffy consoles mount the stereo, which are, you know, blazing hot as well. So, um, yeah, I think you're okay. Um, you just got to be cognizant. Where these really heat up is when you're transmitting. The, the receiving is no big deal. It's the transmit. So if you're doing a lot of talking, um, you know, then, then you could uh, maybe leave the center console open or somehow better ventilate it, especially in summer. In the winter, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So. I can show this one, Tony. Oh, good. There you go. So um, that is Terramoto, right? Uh, oh, no, that's, that's Kelly. maybe Kelly's. Yeah. So there you go. So there's the radio, the intercom. And, you know, the radio is obviously like that one. You can mount it sideways regular flat like whatever the bottom line is all you do on the radio is select the channel and the volume so once that's kind of set you, you really don't mess with it anymore so um, but there's a great example of it in our tj center console yj is virtually identical and the jk is very similar so um yeah that's a good good job alex that's perfect Pretty much caught up on radio uh, stuff. But on radio stuff? There's some off, off topics. Sure, yeah, give me those. Um, where did it go? Keith Silva, nice off topic. What up travel for the shocks would you recommend for 4,500 car we're building? So 4,500 cars are limited to a 14 inch travel shock. So um, that's some place in the rules. I know those rules are ridiculous. But um, yeah, 14 inch travel mounted to the axle. So you gotta make sure that you don't start trying to do a trailing arm or something off of that. It's gotta be mounted to the axle. And by the way, 14 inch travel for a reasonable height vehicle um, is the max that the drive line, the steering, everything can handle. So um, really that uh, should be fine. And uh, that's what Jordan raced on in his 4,500 car for a long time. So, okay. yep. When off-roading the Baja Boss, Mickey Thompson's will, or sorry, ordering, um, will I be charged when they come in and or shipped or immediately? Also, is the shipping really $1,000 for five of them? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, if you're trying to order off the website, um, it does a lot of generic stuff because we, we don't know whether you live in Alaska or, you know, two blocks away in, here in Simi Valley. So um, you're best to call in and uh, talk to the guys and they can get you an accurate shipping quote. Um, I mean, if you're close, you even have the option to come, we'll call them. So it uh, just depends. So call in for that kind of stuff for sure. Yep. Uh, Cody Erickson, differences between your two front shock hoop kits, just how the center crossbar disconnects. Oh yeah. So um, one is two plates that um, or there are two bolt plate, you know, that sandwich together with a tube in between. Um, super simple. People have built stuff like that for many, many years, even back to the Volkswagen days. And um, the other one is a cleaner tube coupler, which goes together and clamps nice and tight. Um, you know, the reality is that's under compression. So um, it, you don't necessarily need a ton of strength, but um, you know, some people just like that cleaner look. So, um, you know, it's kind of up to you. I know the, the tube coupler is quite an upgrade in price. I think it's like 75 or hundred bucks. It's quite a bit because it's a machined piece. You know, you get, you get four of them that fit together. So I know, yeah, but the, the two bolt flange is more than enough. I ran it for years. Yep. Okay. Uh, Kevin Eckler, new to all of this off topic. Can I run 
3712.5 by 17R with a 2003 Rubicon with cremoli axle shafts, no rock crawling, most is sand around the southeast Texas area. Love all your stuff. Yeah, you can you can do it. Um, the, the axle shafts won't break. Um, you know, typically what's happened now is is you you're just um, the pinion's going to be your weak link and your wheel bearings and, and ball joints, right? You know that that stuff. The thirty seven is the way outside limit for that. So, um, but you know, I say run it, have some fun, and you know, um, if you're not crazy and jumping and stuff, you know, probably could last for a long time. So. Go for it and have some fun. Zach Guptill, side question. Do you guys have PRP seats um, that you sell in stock or is it a special order thing? No, all the PRP seats from us are, uh, we used to stock like a generic gray or black one, but nowadays everybody wants to order something fancy with piping or stitching or whatever. So um, we've just been custom ordering everything. Um, I know that PRP does typically stock an all black seat um you know they they i know they build them for their inventory so if you need something right away you could call down there and probably get something um so but yeah i would call them direct and uh you know i appreciate you guys trying to run the business through us but uh if you need something quick go ahead and, and order from them yep uh axel israel tell tony thank you for the shirt and picture at jeep beach Ah, nice. Awesome. It was, it was so great meeting everybody out there. Um, I would say every day, I don't know, we had four or five people that watch Tech Talk come over, um, talk to me, get a picture. You know, I mean, it was just awesome to meet all of our, our viewers and followers. So that was really cool. I, it, it energized our whole team. So it was, it was very cool. Yeah. Uh, Dylan Watson, for a 97 TJ wanting to run only 35s, could I fit 2.5 inch coilovers on a JK with axle or do you, I need a wider axle? Um, so typically if, if that's all you're going to do is a 35 and to fit the 35, you probably already went to a little bit wider wheel with a different backspace, a, a 2.5 would probably fit. Um, so, you know. You'd probably be okay, would, would be my guess, so. Uh, Zach, Zach Guptill, how do you go about picking what U joints? Um, I'm looking to at side kits, but see like one, uh, 1310 versus 1350. Ah, okay, so um, you guys all remember the growler and we got a picture of it around here someplace. Um, the, uh, the growler um, for a lot of years, you know, even when I had the, I don't know if you can get that one with the light right there, but um, we've had, uh, I had a V8 in there, right? An LS1, I ran, um, you know, 42 inch tires and I ran um, 1350 U-joints on that, or sorry, 1310s, uh, because I wanted them to be the weak link. Right, it's super easy to change a drive shaft, and um, by the way, that was uh, 550 horse LS, and I used to beat the crap out of that. And even Jordan drove it, even Jamie drove it, um, and uh, you know I had a good race transmission in there and stuff. And um, we we never ever broke a U joint. So um, 1310 is plenty. And I say that's a great place to put the weak link instead of your, your pinion or somewhere else that's way harder to get to. So, yep. So we've got Alan Cord and Eric also on. Nice. Um, Don Healy said, thanks for your help in Moab, Tony and Jeff. Of course, of course. And we are caught up. All right, awesome, everybody. Okay, so um, we covered the rugged radio. Let's see what else we had here. I got a bunch of stuff for you. Okay, so um, I don't know how easy this is to see. Um, the, this picture is of our uh, trans, universal transmission mount. Um, this is really cool. And uh, what, what you may not realize is your transmission and transfer case are held up right now by your skid plate. So the moment you go to take that down, everything's coming with it. So you have to figure out a way to support it so that you can get in here and service everything, including, you know, if you broke a drive shaft, having to take it off. Um, 
So I developed this kit a long time ago um, for myself, and uh, it's urethane mounted on each end. And the idea behind this is this can also um, allow you to run a belly up skid plate where a lot of the time there's spacers that space down your drive line. Well, if you've got CV joints, if you've done the right stuff, done the slip yoke eliminator, you can move all this up and do a belly up kit. And then this also supports the skid plate um, if you hit the skid plate from bending up. So um, really nice setup. And uh, I think what we're going to do is Alex wants to put one of these on his YJ. So maybe for next week's show, we'll actually show how to go about installing one of these. So um, yeah, you'll want to tune in for next week. This was just kind of a like uh, leader of, uh, you know, hey, coming soon. Yeah. Looking, uh, Justin Andrew, looking at your overdrive power steering pulley for a TJ, I already have your auxiliary power steering cooler for my PSC steering. Cool. So the, um, that pulley, actually, that's, that's like the second product I ever designed. I forget we even sell that. Do we even have one in here? Like, who knows, right? Okay. So um, that pulley is designed for 10% overdrive. So it's, it's, um, it's, I resized it so it's actually turning faster, which makes when you're running at low RPM, you're steering better. And uh, it's also uh, got fan blades built into it, so it's blowing air across your, your uh, power steering pump to help cool it down. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a cool little thing. Um, I've got them in red and blue. So, um, yeah, pretty easy upgrade to install, and uh, you'll definitely notice a difference for sure. I, I think that answers the question, right? Yep. Okay. More um, questions? Man, Robert, they're coming in today. I like yeah, it. Robert Quiros. Um, hi, Tony. Which way to purge the PSC that is connected to the steering box? Um, okay. So if you read the instructions, which nobody does, um, what you want to do is actually jack up the front axle. Um, we typically put it on jack stands to take the tires off. And then you run that back and forth, right? Motor's not running yet. You run it back and forth. Um, and what you're doing is you're purging all the air out of the system. And you'll see it. Like, uh, it'll, it'll overflow or be bubbling. There'll, there'll be all kinds of stuff happening in the reservoir. Um, then if it gets low, you refill it. So it's kind of like bleeding your brakes, right? You just keep refilling it until it stays. It'll, it'll move up and down. Don't worry about that. But um, you just want to make sure the air's out. Then... What I want you to do is you just fire it for a second and uh, turn it back off. And typically you'll see a bunch of bubbles and stuff come back up. The whole idea is you got to get the air out of the system. It's just like your brakes. If there's air in there, it works crummy. So um, it'll work, but it won't be good. And by the way, I don't, I, some, maybe we should do this because um, I know we have one some here. We're here in the studio, but uh, I want to show you the insides of a power steering pump it is metal to metal there's there's a little shaft in the middle with metal veins that run on metal so the moment the lubrication is gone meaning there's air it it starts to actually weld together there's sparks and all kinds of fun stuff happening in there and uh yeah it's it's really important not to have the air in there you you will half-life your pump if you get some air in there so that's why when a power steering line breaks or something happens you got to shut it off Right, the moment you hear that thing squealing, man, you gotta kill it because squeal means it's running dry. So um, we've we've never talked about that on a tech talk. So thanks for the question. So uh, Frederick Borda, uh, I sorry I was wasn't online, but I didn't know if this topic had already been done. Following Tony's advice, I bought R1 rotors for my 2004 LJ, but noticed people install the slots facing different ways with R1's website. I know there is an airflow construction for the front ones. Just curious if they really impact the way they are installed. Thanks. I did not. I did the Terramoto or I did the way Terramoto has them. Okay. Yeah. Well, Terramoto's done right. <laughs> I can tell you that because the R1 guys were here and made sure I did it right. So, um, yeah, I know it's, it, it's not obvious. It's actually backwards from what you think it should be. So, um, because they're they're trying to draw the air from the center and pull it out, um, so it's uh, it's just different than than you would think. So it's um, 
but that's that's cool. I appreciate the question on that too. And we're going to talk about R1 here in a few um, because I'm doing an upgrade on my little YJ. So we're going to talk about pads and rotors. So cool. Okay, so this is coming next week. We're going to talk about this. Uh, next, gas tanks. So um, I want to talk about this. This is this is my very first product. And um, if you've never seen one of these, even today, these are an absolute work of art. Um, every welded, by the way, this is not welded by a machine. This is welded by an artist. And um, my guys take a lot of pride. So whether it's our gas tanks or our bumpers or whatever, uh, these are really handcrafted, all billet machined fittings. Um, absolutely beautiful. And uh, this, is, this is what I built the Genrite name and brand on um, because I made them in all different shapes, which you can see on the screen there um, for different Jeeps. You know, this is an XJ1, a YJ1. We do them for CJs. We do behind the seat tanks. We do race tanks, you know, TJ, everything, everything. So um, JK. So the, the, I'm working on JL and JT stuff. I've, I've already got the JL, obviously, for our EXS. Um, some tanks we make bigger, so you can add an extra five or 10 gallons. Um, some we make smaller so that you can move your axle way back. And um, I always do it so it takes the factory pump module so that it takes all the factory EVAP stuff so you can still use your charcoal canister. You're not gonna smell gas in the garage. Um, I, I really, you know, the, to take a lot of pride in building these tanks and there's a lot of thought that went into them. Each tank comes, like you see the pictures here, with its own skid plate. We do the skid plates in steel or aluminum now. Um, you know, the, the tank itself is, you know, maybe 10 pounds. It's not heavy at all. Um, it's all eighth inch thick aluminum. Um, if you look at any other tank out there on the market, they're um, much thinner. I mean, by 30% thinner. And uh, that's just not right. For, for the, look, I, I believe from a manufacturer standpoint, you know, to make this out of thinner material, I might save 10 bucks. And to me, like, so what? Charge the extra money and do it freaking right. You know, that's, that's the part where I always call bullshit on every other manufacturer. They're absolutely always looking to cut corners and that just pisses me off. So we do it so it's done the right way. We use all factory Jeep vent valves so that when those see liquid, they seal off. I mean, it's, it's just done really, really nice. The other thing I want to mention is, is that inside these tanks, there's a set of baffles. So depending on the tank you get will depend on what the baffles look like. Um, some, if you have an older Jeep like a TJ or YJ, they've got a labyrinth sump. So every time the tank moves back and forth, it's trapping more fuel right at the pickup. Uh, there, there's a ton of thought put into these things. It, it is really a beautiful product. It's a shame to put it up under the Jeep where you can't even see it. Um, but this, this exceeds um, everything about the stock tank that there ever was. So um, we've, we've sold a lot of these over the years. Every one is pressure tested for 24 hours. So we know there's no pinhole leaks anywhere and uh, just really, really nice product. So, um, by the way, these actually get a foam barrier between this and the skid plate. So even if you hit the skid plate, there's a little bit of foam to cushion that before it even gets to the tank. So pretty nice. And I'm sure we've got some questions on this. Yes, yeah, so with Sam Walker said, love our Generate gas tank. Um, <laughs> Steve Bird, they are beautiful. And then- Nice. Got a couple of off topics. Haven't heard from Sam in a while. Awesome, and Steve's got a Jeep night coming up. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. He answered that one. Uh, when do you do generate tank? Make sure for vertical access hatch. Vertical oh, access hatch. actually, that's coming. Okay. So that's <laughs> people are ahead of me. Oh, so um, this is one of the things I wanted to touch on was you know that we improve the departure angle by the way things are shaped. We also, in most cases, tuck everything up by an inch. And, um, oh, here's, a, here's another view. Can they see? Yeah, they can see this over the top of the tank. Um, so everything is done um, in CAD, you know, SolidWorks these days. 
So um, we maximize everything. And uh, this looks like maybe a JK Elite right here. And this is our 36 gallon gas tank that we offer for that. Um, really well designed. We put all the drain holes in the skid plates to make sure, you know, if you're going through water or the car wash or whatever. Um, the straps that hold the tanks in are stainless steel and uh, all the hardware. Just really a top of the line product. So um, I'm trying to give you guys a lot of value for your money. This is the fuel pump access plate, which is what the guy was just talking about. So when you have your tank out, it would behoove you to install this good little guy here because you will be able to easily get to your fuel pump, your fuel lines, everything. Um, I've even shaped this. If you notice, it's got this big rolled edge all the way around so that if you get in there to work on it, you're not cutting your arm on sharp metal. And this is, this is really, again, another really well thought out product. And I think they're 150, so not that much money. Yep. Do the Generate tanks allow for stock fuel pump use or is it something that's also needed needs to be upgraded? No. So um, the only one that requires a different fuel pump is the CJ um, because what I'm allowing those guys to do is use the YJ in-tank fuel pump, um, which, by the way, supports um, up to a 6-liter V8 engine by, by just running the stock YJ fuel pump module. Um, you want an in-tank pump, and uh, I've made it so that you can always reuse your factory um, fuel pump module. That way your sending unit works. There's, there's a lot of nice things about it that way. Um, on the TJ or the JK, you know, those came with their own sump built into the pump. So I absolutely want to reuse that. And, um, you know, some people, depending, you know, like if you've got a TJ, that thing could be 20 years old already. So, um, you know, a lot of guys are just upgrading the pump module at the same time they're putting in a new tank. That's, that's uh, totally up to you. Um, you can also just do the pump itself, which we've talked about, like from Aeromoto, Bosch, Walboro. Um, they're, they start at like 69 bucks and you can just get the little pump and put it in yourself. It takes a little work. Your hands are going to get dirty, but super easy to do. So, especially when you, it's certainly no com more complex than changing the tank. So what are the, what else you got? Um, let's see. S Steve said, I need to get, I need one to get away from that JK lean and Matt Hawkins replied, <laughs> glad I'm not the only one fighting the lean. LOL. Yeah. So, um, if you're not familiar with that, that's because in the JK and the JL, the tank is on the passenger side. And uh, then you combine that with like opening your tire carrier, man, and the thing just mm -hmm. like completely sacks out. Um, so it's unfortunate. Um, you know, Jeep had to do that for to patch some of the new safety and crash stuff. Um, but that's not me and I can do whatever I want. So that's what we did. We, we relocated the tank, just like I showed you. And by the way, when we, Put the tank in the back now you can run a cool triangulated four link which everybody wants so way better get rid of that stupid track bar in the back and uh your jeep will actually work a lot better i can't so. find the comment but someone mentioned that it gives like about three inches of extra space too when you move the tank yeah so so not only um well and we sell you know we sell different tanks right so this one's made for a five inch stretch i've got them for a seven inch stretch i've got them for a nine inch stretch um and if you're going to link your Jeep, then you don't have to worry about the track bar, which typically runs behind the axle. So, um, you know, yeah, you, you get a bunch of different options and uh, you'd be amazed. You know, just by uh, me boxing out this tank, because um, your factory tank's really round, well, we, we gained like another gallon just by doing that. So there, there's a lot of benefits to that. So, all right. More questions? Or are we we doing have okay? a few off topic. Sure. Um, Kevin Kerwin, what is the best way to break in a Curry front axle with locking hubs? That's a great question. <clears throat> so, um, you know, Curry front axles are going to be high pinion, which is awesome because it's running on the correct side of the gear. And uh, typically what I would prefer to do is run that off road and um, you want to, but you want to pick a real smooth fire road and uh, you just want to heat cycle the gears, right? So you want to bring them up to temperature for like 15 minutes and then you want to let them cool all the way down and then do it. I, I like to do that three times and um, then, you know, you're going to be good to go. Uh, a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll change the fluid after that 
just to make sure um, whatever came off the gears, you've got uh, some of the compound from setting the gears and stuff. I just like to get all that out of there and uh, get some fresh fluid in there. And man, that thing's gonna last you a lifetime for sure. So, yep. Matt Hawkins, off topic, what's your caster recommendation for a steering point for a 05 plus Super Duty D60 front on a four door JK on 37s with a 3.5 inch lift? Okay, so um, if, if you're welding the brackets on yourself, um, then you can get a little bit more caster. If, if you got one that the brackets are already on, you're probably only gonna be able to get like six degrees. So um, I, like on our vehicles, we go for that like same 3.5 inch lift and um, I set mine at 10. So um, it's really hard to do when you're not working with a full custom axle, but um, get as close to that number as you can without screwing up your pinion. Because if, if you lean that axle, if you lean the, the knuckles back, it's gonna point the pinion down. So you just gotta be careful that you find a happy medium there. Matt Spencer, looking to replace the entire steering system in my YJ with 37s, waggy 44 front with coilovers. Current steering was pieced together. I would like to do a hydro boost and ram assist. Any companies to look other than PSC? Um, yeah, there, there are. Um, I mean, PSC is probably going to be the best in terms of like having it in stock and availability and overall performance. If you want higher performance, you go to somebody like Howe, um, H-O-W-E. Um, and if you, um, there's another company out there called AGR, which is when I, what I'm running on Terramoto. And um, that also, they were able to make me a, a very high performance unit based on what I told them I wanted. And um, I just run straight um, pump, like the, their, you know, the high performance pump and uh, so I don't, I don't run a hydro boost or anything. I just run regular and then I, I do the Ram assist and uh, that's more than enough. I mean, we were, we just had uh, my Jeep outside yesterday on the pavement, just turn on the motor at idle and you can crank uh, the wheels like, like they're not even on the ground on the Terramoto. You can act, it's got a quick release steering wheel. You can actually turn the shaft with your hand. So I'm, I'm not kidding, like it's crazy good. And um, so um, the, you can, if you're, if you're willing to talk to the guys at the company um, and, and get like, I know the kits that we stock, you know, for everything from, you know, CJ, TJ, YJ on up, um, I spec what they call their extreme kit. So it's, it's got the most power, the most everything, so that when you get in your Jeep, you can literally park next to a wall and turn the wheels and like move the Jeep over. So, uh, but you know, all of these companies have different levels of kits. And uh, you know, if you're shopping for price, it's gonna be the, the real junky BS one. You know, if you're looking at Northridge and all these other guys, they don't sell the good stuff. So um, yeah, you just gotta pay attention. You get what you pay for. So mm -hmm. good question. Um Don Cars picked up an 04 TJ stock. What is the largest gas tank I can install without moving the shocks out on the axle? Yeah, great question. So 25 gallon. Um, and I think there was a picture of that on here. Uh, it's gonna be this one, 25 gallon right there. And uh, that literally, um, you know, if you, if you look at your, your stock skid plate, it bolts right in uses reuses the pump reuses everything and uh yeah it'll fit beautifully so um some of the gas tanks do require a body lift or a spacer kit so you just have to be careful um for what you got but yeah a 25 gallon tank of there would be a nice upgrade for sure especially with gas prices the way they are yeah brandon grajita um my 01 tj only fills up approximately 12 gallons at most is that right for my stock gas tank <laughs> so um the stock well a couple things um, I'm, i'll tell you this and then you can check yours so from the factory the light on your dash that says you need fuel or you know when it gets down to empty always leaves you five gallons in the tank now that's from the showroom floor now, if you've been out beating it around, the, the little arm's probably not quite the same as it used to be. 
and uh, could be bent is what I'm saying. Um, and by the way, it just works on resistance. There's a little resistor in there that it works on. So um, anything can change over the years. It could be corroded, whatever. Um, so the only real way to know is if you carry like a little gas can and you run that thing till it's really empty, then you can, you can figure out how much, you know, you really have. Um, typical tank is 19 gallons. Um, you can never run one all the way out or you won't make it to the gas station. So they always give you some cushion. Um, sounds like yours might be coming on. Now, one more caveat here. Most of the Jeeps that I've seen, I look underneath and that gas tank's been just bashed, right? So, well, guys, I got to tell you, when it's smashed, it's just taken away, you know, four or five gallons of your capacity. So if, you're, if your tank's bent, your skid plate's bent, that means your tank is smashed and it's affecting how much you can put in there. And, uh, you know, right, by the way, on a TJ, the fuel pump module is spring loaded. So um, it'll, it'll take that without, you know, screwing up the fuel system. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's affecting something, obviously. Yep. Val on that subject said, which gas tank should replace an OEM JKU gas tank with non-generate lift? Like my JKU has a TerraFlex long arm lift and the tank just split wide open. Yeah, so we offer, um, it's this one here. And uh, that tank, um, we offered in a 20 and a 25 gallon. It'll go directly in the back. It sits where the rear mufflers, by the way, there's two mufflers on your Jeep. It, you take out the rear muffler and it goes right in, takes the factory fuel pump, everything. You just move it back, um, still fills through the factory filler, everything. And uh, you can get a 20 or a 25 gallon. You keep in mind, your factory one is 19 gallons. So you're already picking up a gallon, even with our like base model tank. The base model tank, by the way, has two more inches of ground clearance. So it's, it's like so tucked up in there. Um, you know, it, it takes, it doesn't stick down any further than the factory muffler did. So um, it's really, really nice. So, but I would recommend the 25, like just, then you're not carrying an extra gas can ever. So. Zach Guptill, do you guys sell the fuel cells for the back storage area? We do. That's this one. And uh, we make this in a variety of configurations. This one happens to be for a YJ, um, but we also make one for a TJ with the pump ring on it like that. Um, this has, uh, there's a gas cap down inside. This is what we call a fuel dam. So if you um, have a little accident while you're filling, the fuel doesn't run all over the inside of your car. You get a chance to mop it up or let it evaporate, whatever. And there's a nice little cap that goes on. Um, this still does have uh, the rollover valves. So um, those are the factory vent valves. And uh, you can tie that back into your charcoal canister or a small filter or something. But um, you have to ventilate the tank. So I don't know if you remember, from your science class back in like junior high, when they took a metal can that looked like the old style one gallon gas can. And if you just heat it, it expands. And if you cool it, it contracts. Well, if you don't have these valves in there, by the way, you're, you're taking fluid out right as you drive. Well, something's got to happen. And if you don't vent this tank, it'll like just start crushing together. Um, so needless to say, the next time you go to put fuel in, it's not going to fill up very well. So. Yeah, you gotta have it vented. Yep. What else you got? Um, off topic, uh, Matt Hawkins also fighting brake pedal feel with 60 by 14 bolt. Um, what's your brake master cylinder to match the best? So that's a good one. Um, what vehicle did it's, it say? It's, um, So um, while she's looking for that, I'm going to tell you a couple things. Uh, number one, when you take a brake or axles out of a one-ton pickup, you know, the, the, the calipers are much larger. And uh, if you ever looked under the hood on a one-ton truck, the, so is the whole master cylinder assembly. Um, the, the, the vacuum booster, the whole master cylinder. So ideally, you'd want to take that whole thing and put it in your Jeep too to have good brakes. Um, so when you leave your factory stuff in there, then, you know, you're, you're kind of fighting it. Um, or you do what we do where you upgrade, um, to an aftermarket caliper, which is matched to the factory, uh, master cylinder. The so four door JK, four door JK. Okay. So you're in luck. You can go down to the dealer and you can get an upgrade. It's not very expensive. Last time I bought one, it was like 200 bucks, um, where you get a whole new master cylinder. And I think it's out of the Dakota or the 1500. 
but um, it's a common upgrade for the JK. You can do a quick Google search and find it and um, super easy to do and that will fix your problem. So um, for the JK guys, that's a good fix. Yep, what else you got? Okay. We're doing good, we got 10 minutes left. Is, uh, I know, yeah. What What is next, by the way? Uh, we haven't even gotten to the good stuff. Um, while she's looking for more questions, I'm going to move ahead a little. This is what I wanted to get to. So, um, get this out of the way. All right, it's on, okay. So, um, here's the deal. I feel very strongly about the safety of you, your family, and your friends that ride with you in your Jeep. And um, I've decided that this coming Memorial Day, we are gonna do a sale on roll cages. Now we have not had a sale in years, okay? And the fact that we're doing this when um, material prices are up, supplies hard to get, like there's, there's a lot of issues as a manufacturer um, I think really means a lot. And um, I wanna make sure that we can offer something really cool to you guys as customers. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna knock 300 bucks off a JK roll cage for Memorial Day. And we're gonna do $250 on every other CJ, YJ, TJ, LJ cage. Um, now I know we have a picture of the JL up here, but that cage isn't available, so it won't be on sale <laughs> yet. <laughs> So um, otherwise, uh, the stuff that is available, that will, will be offering a substantial discount. So it uh, might be time to dig extra deep in your pocket and figure out a way to get yourself a cage. So um, that just gives you, I'm, I'm just trying to give you some notice that that is coming, okay? Any questions on that? Uh, off topic, but. Off topic, okay, off topic. I'll take one off topic. Um, do you have a power steering pump upgrade for the LT1 swapped? LJR. Um, so that's going to be well, what I would do is actually send that pump in to somebody like AGR and have them uh, trick it out, and uh, that would be the, then you'll you'll be sure that it will remount on your motor. So, okay. And by the way, I always have two pumps. So I have uh, the one that's on the vehicle, and I have a spare that's either in the vehicle with me which like in the Terramoto is always in there, or I have one like on my trailer or in my RV. So I've always got a spare. Um, obviously if your power steering goes out, you're gonna have quite a crappy day. So yeah, got more? Yep, Chris, good now. Uh, my 09 JKU has the 25 gallon generate tank. It has a Dodge Ram fuel pump in it, so it doesn't need the extension kit. Do you know what year and model truck to get a new fuel pump for it? Oh man, I used to know that. Um, I would call in and talk to my guys. Um, talk to Andrew, he's probably the most knowledgeable on that. Um, he, he's really good about keeping notes on, on those things. So, um, and I, I guess they're, it's too late now, they're not there anymore, but do try tomorrow and uh, they'll be able to tell you. And the extension kit's not a big deal either. So, I, I, in fact, we did a video on that, Alex, I don't know if that made it over to YouTube yet or not, but I think it does. yeah, we've shot a bunch of videos. So there, there might already be a video on that um, over on YouTube, our, our YouTube channel, so. Just a comment, Chase hopped on our buddy from Jeep Beach. Oh, what's how's up? his foot? What's up, Tony? It's your favorite guy from South Carolina, AKA Crip tonight, LOL. Nice, nice. How's the, how's the uh, heel doing? Um, he had a, a slight mishap when we were, uh, out having fun on, I don't know what that was, was that Friday or Saturday night? I think it was Saturday night. Yep. Yeah, right so. Right before we left. Hope you're doing better, buddy. Um, Matt Spencer, aluminum versus steel arms for a YJ and Y. Also, is it worth putting bend in like the old nth degree long arm kits used to be for clearance? Yeah, that's a great subject. Um, <clears throat> so, I've got a lot of feelings on this, and part of it depends on what size tire you're running. Part of it depends on what your lower link geometry is. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, our customer, Peter Doolin, um, has Maximus, as you know, and Maximus is a single triangulated rear suspension, or tracer suspension. And uh, he ended up 
buying Jordan's old 4500 car, which is double triangulated, so it moves the links way in. And uh, he, it, it was interesting because he noticed a difference in, you know, when you go to get up something, how there's nothing there. I mean, it just goes right up. And that's, you know, that's what's incorporated in our brand new EXS, our Elite. Um, you know, we've had it forever on our Legend kit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's that way for a reason. It really makes a big difference. So um, I, I'm a big fan of the aluminum links. Um, I've had great luck with those. Um, I've, I've run, you know, standard thick wall DOM. I've run heat treated chromoly. I've tried all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, we sell the Summit machine ones and they're, they've been great. Um, I've run those for years and years on Terramoto. I'm about to try some brand new ones from uh, Rock Jock. They, they came up with a new design and uh, sent me over some to try. So um, when I put Terramoto back together, I'm going to try those out. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Jennings would like to know if the gas tanks fit on a four-cylinder 2.0 JL like tails. <laughs> well, I don't have the JL gas tank done yet, but when it is done, it will fit, yes. Because the, the fuel pump module, when you, you could put it in a bucket of, a five-gallon bucket of you know, fuel, and it wouldn't even know. So um, the reality is, yeah, what well, doesn't matter whether you've got the, uh, the diesel, the 3.6, the 2.0. Um, when we move that gas tank, as long as you use your fuel pump module, that's a great question. It'll it'll work just fine. So, yep. Thomas Erk, will they hook up to the charcoal canister? Yes. Yeah. Um, all of our tanks hook up to the charcoal canister. That's where those vent valves typically go to. So, because um, you don't want to smell the gas fumes in your garage or just as you're walking around your Jeep. Um, yeah. It's good to know Tom's on there. I haven't haven't heard his name in a while. Hope he's coming out to uh, High Desert Roundup. So I, I sent him an invite. Awesome. So he's, uh, he's our, if you don't know, our first TJ to LJ guy. So oh, and by the way, the bow ties over at the paint shop for an update on it for all our TJ to LJ stretch lovers. You know, yep, it's over at the paint shop. Jim Smith, off topic. 2021 JLU with stock Dana 44 LSD in the rear and Dana 30 front. I want to do this in stages and would like to change front axle to Dana 44 with e-locker first. Would the stock rear axle with LSD work all right if I change the front to Dana 44? Yeah, in fact, I would highly recommend that you go with uh, a high pinion Curry or a Dynatrack front axle. Uh, 44, they make a housing, um, really nice quality, reasonably priced. And uh, they make it with all the brackets on it, it'll bolt right in. Um, a lot of the time you can reuse your knuckles, brakes, you know, the whole thing. So, um, yeah, you should definitely look into that. Um, you can talk to my guys. I think we have some of those listed on our website, or you can call the manufacturers direct. Uh, but, yes, you're thinking the right way. And uh, what you'll have to do is you're just going to have to match the gear ratio to what you have in the rear or... If you're going to go with a lower gear ratio in your new front axle, you've got to do that in the rear axle at the same time. Um, then you'd be able to run a bigger tire and the thing will run great. So, yeah, good question. Back to the gas tank. Sure. Uh, Anthony Paquette, um, on a JKU, does the pump access panel fully cover the back area where the jack slash tool pocket is? It does, yeah. So, um, Alex, is that one right over there? I think it's leaning up against the pole. The, the um, fuel pump access plate for a JK is quite a... That's the JL one? Let, let me see it. Is it... Oh, yeah. It's similar, though. Bring it over. It'll be good enough for talking about this. Sam commented on that, said, if I remember correctly, I think the access panel is forward from the jack compartment. It does displace the subwoofer for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit bigger than the one I was showing you guys on the screen for, like, a TJYJ. And... Uh, this you know allows now when we make this one all of this it's you know 100 percent flush which is really cool so um yeah but the, the jk and the jl is quite a bit bigger so um yeah good question all right uh brandon grahada loaded question here O1 one tj with a three inch lift rear curry nine inch what is the best cost effective way to get started with stretching the rear having a shop do it Oh man, say, say it again. Give me the, the Jeep again. It's an 01 TJ with a three inch lift. 
Okay. Rear curry nine inch. What is the best cost effective way to get started with stretching the rear? Okay, so we sell a coil spring relocation bracket that will allow you to slide the spring back. You're gonna need one of our gas tanks and then you can just have the shop make the arm slightly longer and you can easily get three inches out of that. And um, if you're really clever, if you're willing to go to like coilovers, then you can get five or six inches out of it pretty easy. So um, just depends, but you can use your coil spring and just use the relocation bracket that's up on the top where the frame is. And if you just go over to our website, I don't remember what the part number is, but um, it's easy to find under the TJ and it, I think it's a DIY or builder section. But um, yeah, super easy to do. I did it with um, JP Magazine years ago. You might even be able to go online and do a quick search. I think it was the budget TJ stretch. Um, it was a red Jeep and uh, you might be able to find that, but um, yeah, a great question. And you know, I, I forget about that. It's like uh, build my budget YJ. Um, you can definitely do that on a TJ as well, for sure. Jennings said, okay, Sonic needs a cage. Time to bite the bullet. <laughs> oh yeah, because we got them on sale. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very uh, nice. Let's see. JK or JK, you roll cages for sale? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, TJ, YJ, CJ, LJ, JK. Yeah. BK TJ wants to know, can we pick up the cage locally or have um, to save on shipping with the memorial discount as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. Have to call in to do that. Yeah. Uh, for the TJ LJ guys, can you, you can use a master cylinder doorman M390516 for There you go. Bikes. So somebody's got that already. Yep. Awesome. Kevin Miller, thank you. Um, TJ to LJ conversion kit is what people are saying for that. Um, yeah, that's, that's an awesome setup. I, I can't wait to get that Jeep back. We've already got the cage done. Like we're ready to just put that thing together. So it's gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. And by the way, um, I'm gonna skip past the break thing cause we're almost out of time. But um, we just finished this two door stretch JK. Um, looks absolutely awesome. And this has our uh, two door stretch corner guards um, with our recessed tail lights and everything. We, we get a lot of questions about this. Um, and this is a 102 inch wheelbase. Yeah, um, really nice. They did our, our curry axles, full elite, you know, which on the two door we call the extreme, our narrow front fenders, uh, obviously the recessed, you know, tail lights, um, and then the rockers, you know, all built in the flat belly skid. This has got our uh, 25 gallon gas tank. So um, pretty nice. This, this one happened to be a manual um, with a Hemi and we did a cage, um, really, really a sharp looking vehicle. There's the aluminum control arms. I mean, when it's brand new, it looks like a piece of jewelry. Look at that, just beautiful. Wrap the exhaust, tuck everything up. There's the rear end. Again, double triangulated, super nice. And, uh, oh, we were gonna talk about steering. Hang on. Or we're gonna have to skip past this. We'll do this on next week's. Um, and then we've got the new video coming on our YouTube channel, the GenRight YouTube channel on Friday. We always do a new one on Friday. And uh, this is what I wanna get to. So we just updated our runs and events. So I've done it through the end of the year. And um, we've got our turkey run on here. People have been emailing me about that and our Christmas crawl. So everything's on here. Um, sign up for those. Those are, those are limited quantities uh, because the turkey run, we actually cook turkey dinner. So, um, and the Christmas call, crawl, we have a limited amount of people. So if you're interested in any of those things, get over and sign up. Um, lots, of, lots of people have been asking about that. All right, we are done. We're over time, so um, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it, and we'll see everyone next Wednesday.